I don't know why I haven't played Iron Man before for you. I've, uh, I listen to her all the time. She's great. I mean, I mean, when I listen to an album, I like every track of it. Um, and uh, there, there you go. Amy Man. Check her out if you haven't already. You probably have. Uh, now, straight away, hello, everyone. Oh, where you were? Uh, where you at? That's what I, that's how I say. I say, where you at? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, Buddy, daddy, like, oh, where I, I go, I go, where you at? Like, you know, like, just like cool kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, Boston, straight away, one for America. Ithaca, New York, oh, Mexico, um, North America's storming it. Canada, see? Uh, Wales, first British. Um, Canvey Island, Liverpool. Okay, we're coming through now. Uh, Portland, Oregon. My cat supports the Portland Pickles. She follows them on Twitter and now they follow their back. <laughs> Just because her name's Pickle. We find it funny. Um, talking of which, uh, <clears throat> got a question here from her taco. Yeah, her taco's got a Twitter handle. Nothing to do with us. Um, uh, I've got so many questions. I'm not going to get to all of them. Some I've probably missed, but you know, honestly, I've had hundreds. So I'll try and get through as many as I can. And I've missed Mr. Taco for a few weeks because I couldn't get to him. But <laughs> right, this is a question from Pickles Taco. If you were making a documentary about African wildlife, would you intervene when the cheetah attacks a zebra? If so, why don't you intervene when Pickalicious F is killing me? <laughs> she loves that. Type. She fights it. She she brings it to threat. Oh my god, she's crazy for it. Um, but yeah, it does it does look quite brutal. Uh, would I would I intervene with a, a cheetah attack a zebra? I probably would. I remember when I was a kid, and I, I used to love wildlife shows. And whenever the <coughs> lion took down the zebra, I'd, I said to my mum, why, because I understood that it was being filmed, you know, I was only sort of seven, eight, nine, but I said, why don't the film crew help the zebra, right? And my mum went, you can't interfere with nature. And I remember thinking, oh, let's see what happens if the lion turned on Attenborough. I reckon there'd be a little bit of a kerfuffle. I think we would interfere then. Um, and the only way I could get through it, when something ate something else, was I thought, oh, because this was filmed years ago, so that animal is out of its misery now. Isn't that weird? Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's emotional as opposed to logical, but I, th I, think, uh, I think that's quite a healthy attitude. Um, anyway, I, I've always loved animals. Um, sorry, Mr. Taco, you are an inanimate object. And you're filled with catnip, so you're sort of asking for it. <laughs> How weird is this? Chef Steve, how do you go about casting in general? Do you consider more than one actor for a role? Or are you pretty sure on the first choice? Well, I am pretty sure on the first choice. All, all major roles, I think I'd say 99% of the time, um, you get who you get your first choice. If you've got a good track record and they like the stuff, they like the script, you're gonna get. If, if they're available, you're gonna get your first choice. Um, if you don't, yeah, you 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 probably do have to have a list. Uh, now I sort of I work with people I've worked with before, so I know them all. So um, there, there's usually there's usually someone I know is perfect for it. Um, but then smaller roles where you. I haven't considered it, like cameos and little things like that, then, um, you know, you do cast, you know, because you don't know who you'll get, you know. Um, so uh, I, I probably cast the main cast now, nowadays, before I've even started writing it and get a yes, and then I write for them, and that makes it, makes it better and easier. 
Uh, but, you know, you still probably cast 30 small roles every time in a more traditional sense. And when I'm casting someone, it's, it's annoying casting because you see 10 people and it's annoying if the first one's no good. You know, and it's annoying if they're brilliant because then you want to give it to them and you feel sorry for the other nine. And then the ones that don't get it, I want to give them um, sort of consolation prizes. I'm not out for it. I'm not. I. I'm, I. I couldn't be on a um, a panel. Like, I couldn't be like Simon Cowell going, "No, you're rubbish." I go, "Oh, we. F- I go, oh, we'll find something for you." <laughs> um, Danielle, <clears throat> how does it feel having constant positivity from people? Mm, well, I'm not sure about that. Um, every minute of every day uh, on Twitter, uh, it must do wonders for your mental health. The extremely rare times you've had negative comments. Does it bother you at all? Um, um, well, you're you're right. Yeah, mostly it's lovely, and that's great. And it probably does a lovely Twitter feed is better than a nasty one. But I think it's not a case of hoping that everyone loves you and trying to do things to make everyone love you. It's a case of doing what you do and knowing you've done no wrong, doing your thing. And knowing that for everyone that loves it, someone won't like it. Simple as that. But that shouldn't affect you. Everyone's different. Imagine you can't do something that everyone likes because that means it's so anodyne. It means that no one cares. So anything you do that's slightly interesting or contentious or brave or or any of those things, people are going to love it. And as many people are going to hate it because they're not like you. So... You shouldn't worry about it. And you sort of create your own atmosphere. You know, it, it's probably rare for people to follow me that don't like something I do. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It is extremely rare. Uh, the negative comment, it doesn't bother me. I think early days it did. I think, oh, I've done something wrong. Um, and I, I delete it or go, I talk to them. And I just think, oh, now they just want attention. Like in the fir- early years, like I get a negative comment and I go, what was that about? Or a sarcastic thing or, you know. And they go, oh, I've got a reaction. Oh, I, I love your stuff, mate. I think, why would you, why would you do that? <laughs> so, and I look back on their feed and they've actually tweeted me 50 times saying something nice and that didn't work. It's such a weird thing that people would rather be, they'd rather be noticed for being a twat than not noticed. Um, so you just have to ignore it. Um, I think I do feel sorry for people who are do have a hard time. I'd say turn your phone off, go for a walk, because the real world's still all right. Um, uh, but yes, it's lovely. It is lovely. I've got, I've got, I, I've got a lovely, a lovely Twitter feed, uh, and this, and this is is obviously lovely as well. I mean, I'm talking to cats and dogs and inanimate objects, but <laughs> still, it's still lovely. <laughs> Titch. Hey, Uncle. <clears throat> my mum, I've got a sore throat just in the last minute. First thing I said to Jane was, is that COVID? And she went, you've probably got a sore throat. <clears throat> yeah. Hot bath makes me sweat. I go, is that COVID? <laughs> the light makes my eyes stink. Is that COVID? Everything's COVID. Um, I can't have it. I'm, I haven't been near anyone. Uh, my mum loves to give fuss, especially to me. This is Titch. So my dad calls her smother, a play on mother. He thinks he's funny. Who is the most touchy-feely out of you or Auntie? Do you mean towards Pickle? Um, well, we both love Pickle. We both love a cuddle. And, but Jane's more satisfied with Pickle just sleeping on her for ages. And she doesn't bother her. Whereas I have to fiddle. <laughs> I have to do I go and wake her up if I'm bored. And we go play with me. <laughs> so I think... Um, with the cat is definitely me in terms of bothering bothering the cat I bother Pickle more than Jane um, but we both love uh, we both love a little snungle um, Claire I have a question for today's Talking Bollocks about Afterlife do you think if Roxy knew that Tony had given Julian enough cash to overdose she would understand 
do you think Tony regrets giving him the money? Uh, well, I sort of don't like to. I don't like to explain it because I want people to make their own mind up. Um, uh, the backstory, I think, is that he wasn't thinking straight, and he thought he was doing something nice, and he thought he was putting someone out of their misery because he thought that he wanted that. Uh, I think he probably does regret it just because it's. Ha I just think that he's different now, um, and I don't. And I don't think. I don't think he knows Roxy would be troubled by that. So I don't. So I think he's uh, he's keeping it a secret. Um, but I sort of want the work to stand up. I get lots of questions about that, but. I almost don't want to answer it, if you know what I mean, because I want it to stand up for itself. Um, but uh, I think that was sort of implicit, that it was, uh, you know, an ambiguous morality because of what he was going through in his head and that he hasn't told her, probably for a reason. Ollie Comic Strip. Studies have shown that as we grow old, we lose the ability to suppress inappropriate thoughts and inhibit offensive remarks. <laughs> I've never had that. Um, exactly how old are you? <laughs> Do comedians have older brains or less inhibitions to start with? Well, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we probably are slightly different. Um, I, you know, only because everyone's different, so that, that we probably do have some things in common. Um, uh, personally, I... I, I uh, I like to discuss taboo subjects and contentious issues because um, I uh, I like to take the audience to a place it hasn't been before. I like that. I like that little worry um, because I sort of want to show that you can joke about anything. It depends on the joke. So I do purposely sometimes start a premise that's a bit scary, and then it and then it's okay. Source. So, some people still don't think it's okay because they've been clouded. Some people think that you shouldn't joke about certain things, which is usually personal to them. And that's fine. Um, but uh, I can justify everything. It, it, it's an odd thing to say you shouldn't joke about a subject when it totally depends on what you're saying about the subject. You wouldn't say you shouldn't talk about the subject. You know, I think as, as people assume a joke about something is putting it down. A joke is a negative thing. Well, I, I, it doesn't have to be. It can be pro, anti, indifferent. You know, uh, this thing about punching up and punching down. Puns don't punch anywhere. They're a play on words. They're a little, a little, a, a mind trick. Um, so, uh, uh, I think we purposely have less inhibitions because we want to explore things. Um, but uh, I don't think we're. But I think you do, you're right. I think as you get older, you lose a bit. I think your brain shrinks, doesn't it? And it affects the, the part of your brain that, that um, inhibits us. That's why you get old people saying awful things. Uh, we're saying I think it's funny. <laughs> An old person says some old people's rights, like my mum. She'd just say to me, Rick, you look, oh, he looks fat. Rick, you look absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Mind you, she used to say things like that when she was younger. Uh, Harry, is it Harry or Hari? It's H R H A R I. I don't know if that's Hari or ha a funny spelling of Harry. Anyway, it's Harry the cat. Uh, Harry the cat. To get attention, I meow loudly. Yeah. Roll around on the floor looking cute. And if after two seconds this hasn't worked, I pull up the carpet. I need to improve the response time and wondered how Miss P gets your attention. Pickle yowls loudly. She's got a really powerful yowl, even when her mouth's full of the taco. She's got different different things. So sometimes she'll yowl because she's hungry and that's an impatient, like feed me, feed me. It's quarter two, it's quarter two, right? She does that, it's quarter two, right? Um, and the other yowl, is I've got the taco, throw it. She just announced, you're coming through and you hear that, and you look around and she's there with the taco. She's sort of like, go, go play with me. Um, oh, there's another yowl is we've locked her, accidentally locked her in a room, 
like gone out and shut the door. And then we just hear this yowling. She's going, let me fucking let me out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's how she gets our attention. Um, Teddy. Teddy, the, uh, the little rescue, the little Romanian rescue dog. Whenever I see someone with a dog on my walkers, I bark to say, play with me. Then do a play bow. If you had to do one of the following whenever you spot a person walking a dog, which would you choose? Lie down on the floor with your bum in the air like you want to play. <laughs> Repeatedly shout woof at them for a few minutes whilst excitedly jumping up and down. Yeah. Approach them, give them a good sniff, lick the person's face, then walk on. Well, I can't do that one because I get punched in the face, obviously. Can't go around. You can't, as a human, you can't go around licking other people. That's sort of, that's sort of a rule in the human society, particularly during a pandemic. So it's not that one. Lie down on the floor with your bum in the air like you want to play. Bit mental. Or but so I've got a so I've got a lay down on the floor, bark or lick their face. I suppose shouting woof and jumping up and down. Cause I think then they just think, oh, he's mental. But they'd recognise me, wouldn't they? They go, that's the bloke from the office. He's <laughs> <It was> mental. <laughs> so it's, I think it's worse for me, Teddy. I'll go with it. Yeah, that one. Jump up and down, bark, going woof. Um, this is from Gunner. Super Bowl 2021, it is. David Brent and Foregone Conclusion are performing the halftime show. What would their set be? T-shirt gun, yes or no? Definitely yes. Definitely the T-shirt gun to an American Super Bowl crowd. Oh, they love that. They love that. Um, I first saw the T-shirt gun that I used in the film and live at um, a Knicks game. I, I was blown away by how far they could shoot a T-shirt. I thought, right, I'm going to get one of those. <laughs> uh, so yes to that. Um, yeah, half time, what do I do? You, what have you, got? you don't want to do too long, do you? You've got... What, I don't know what the half time. Three songs, three songs. I think the most Americana type songs. Oh, so uh, um, Ooh La La. Sold my shack in Memphis. Uh, that's quite American. Um, Ooh La La. Uh, Native American. So. Uh, and end with Free Love Freeway. Classic. Boom, three songs. Good night. Uh, who wants a t-shirt? So that sort of thing. <laughs> um, Freya, it's my 14th birthday today. Happy birthday. And I'm sad I can't go out with my mates because of lockdown. My question for today is, have you... What have you missed doing the most because of lockdown? Well, well, I mean, I think one has to be gigs. I mean, for lots of reasons. The, you know, just the admin of moving arena gigs, sometimes twice, letting people down, uh, you know, flights. So that, so... And and that's and that's annoying. That's not like missing it as much as like, I wish we'd have done them because I'd love them and we'd I'd have done them by now. And you're letting people down. But within that, uh, miss I really miss walking around the lovely cities that I play. I, I you know I I I go to play an arena, an hour's work, and then me and Jane spend the weekend in Stockholm, Amsterdam, Vienna. Zurich, you know, Copenhagen, Toronto, Vancouver, New York, Chicago. Oh, I'm, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely what I miss most. 
And I didn't think I would, but just when I mean, you can't do something. So it's, it's, it's traveling and, and, and eating out and walking around normal life. But that's, but specifically probably that. Um, Leopold and Love Day want to know how I went from eating enough sausages to induce a heart attack. <laughs> Basically no meat at all. Um, well, I suppose it was gradual. Uh, like I cut out, I cut out um, beef like like twenty five years ago, uh, and, and red and red meat, all red meat soon after that, and then then chicken, um, uh, and then just you know got stricter and stricter. But do you know what? It's not about it's not about completely going vegan or even completely giving up meat because I think you're allowed to you're allowed to just be better today than you were yesterday you're allowed to be slightly better this year than you were last year and I don't go around lecturing people saying you're disgusting and you know you shouldn't eat this or you shouldn't eat that I go why don't you try this why don't you try you know and even down to the the ethical point um, you know, there is a sliding scale. You know, I, 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 you know, I, it's obviously worse to, you know, torture an animal to death than you know, eat a piece of fish that's been like, you know, there's, there is a sliding scale. Um, you know, it, it stops all ambiguity by not eating any animal. But I, I just, I think... Even that stat that if you if, if the world cut out ten percent of me, it would feed a hundred million people, and then I think you sort of get hooked and you don't you don't miss it. Uh, and also, it's easier now than ever because there's there's brilliant alternatives. There are things that are they taste better, they're more protein, more fiber, better for you, no cruelty, saving the planet. It's sort of a no-brainer, but just do it once a week if you love your your steak and chips and your pork chops and your bacon. Uh, that's, that, you know, that one, just one day a week, try, try Beyond Meat. Try a Beyond Meat burger with lots of tomato sauce and mustard and onions. Honestly, you'll go, I, you, don't, you will not, you won't miss the fact that, fuck knows what went into a, a meat version anyway, but you won't miss it, I'd say. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just just trying just trying a little bit. Everyone doing a little bit. Everyone doing a little bit. That's all. Um, uh, so that was it, really. It was it was gradual, and it got easier and easier. Bella, after I've been playing with my favourite toys, I have to roll my whole body around, <laughs> back and forth, all over the toy for a good few minutes. I call this the wiggly worm dance. If you had to do the same, would it put you off playing your guitar? So what you say is, if every time I play my guitar, I then had to put it on the floor and roll around on it, would I not play my guitar? Well, I, <laughs> I'd, probably, I'd probably only play it in private and in a carpeted room. Um, but yeah, that would be. I mean, if it was compulsory, <laughs> <laughs> it probably would put me off playing the guitar a bit, thinking, oh, "This is a nice thing," but now I've got to roll around the floor on it. Um, well, that was an absolute load of bollocks, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I've got nothing to tell you. Oh, I wanted to show you this now. Got a new mic, got a new posh mic. Because I'm gonna, I'm thinking about doing a, a proper podcast again. Uh, well, as you know, I've done a billion free minutes of this shite for you. Hasn't cost you anything, has it? I'm gonna try and keep the podcast free. If I can get it sponsored or put it on a platform that they pay me or or advertise something, right? Um, just so you lot don't have to pay 
a penny towards anything I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have to um, give a pound to charity if you want. Um, just you, I tell you what, just watch Afterlife if you haven't already, or tweet about it if you have. That that's enough. That's a thank you for this shite. Just tweet. Don't even at me. Just tell the world how brilliant Afterlife is and humanity. You you sort of do that anyway. Um, thank you for following. Uh, uh, don't forget this. If you got if you want recommendations, Street Dog, great. Brew Dog, a great company, and um, they've been very nice to dogs. Thank you to I did a I did um, Will Arnett and and uh, uh, Jason Bateman and Sean's uh, podcast Smartless, and they they're going to donate something on my behalf to All Dogs Matter. Uh, so that's nice. Um, what else? Try try Beyond Meat. Have a Beyond Meat burger. Um, other lovely non-meat products are available. But honestly, it'll blow you away. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thanks for following. Uh, see you, what day is it? Sunday. How long is this going on? <laughs> How long have I got to do this? What Tweet, tweet about Afterlife. That's free. Retweet this. That's free. Just... Do something. Thank you so much. Tatty bye, everyone. Be nice to animals. Tatty bye.